Today we are here to say Olubeja, the defender that is fighting our battles even when we are not aware of it. Listen and be blessed in Jesus' name. You are my rock, you are my shield, you are the giver of life and no hope, you are my maker, my protector, my sustainer, you are my very present help, you are the one who fights my battles, you have delivered me from shame, you are my weapon, you're my fighter, my defender. The steady working behind the scenes. Oh, Lugaja, that is your name, that's who you are. Oh, Lugaja, that is your name, that's who you are. Oh, Lugaja, oh, that is your name, that's who you are. I'm not going to do it. 
that's who you are. God is our defense. And he's the one who fights our battle. And that is the confidence that we have as children of God. That there is someone behind the scene fighting our battle. That is the confidence that we have. That is why we can stand before challenges and say truly, we have all the beja behind us. That is your name. That's who you are. All the beja. All the beja. That is your name. That's who you are. All the beja. Shout hallelujah. Shout a louder hallelujah. We give thanks to God, our defender, our helper, our sustainer. The one who gave us victory, who is giving us victory, who also assure us of victory in the years ahead. He has helped us to conquer January to uh, October. And the remaining two months for this year to go, we're already conquering November. And we are going to put December behind us. We shall see the new year together. If Jesus tarries, in the name of Jesus. So I want to welcome you to church. I know you have welcomed yourself. But welcome somebody beside you once again and say welcome to the family month welcome to the family month hallelujah let us pray our father and our lord we thank you we are grateful lord for bringing us thus far in the journey of 2023 we are here today oh god to hear you to hear your mind for the month of November and everything Lord that you are put in place for us for this month Father I ask in the name of Jesus you will speak to us you will bless us your word will visit the foundation of our lives foundation of our homes in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Lord because you have answered in Jesus mighty name we have prayed we suspend every activities of demonic operations. We bind them and cast them out in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord Church. This month, November, is our family month. We call it the family celebration month. So, um, some of our focuses this month will be in the area of our home, our marriage, our family. Touch aspect of parenting. Touch the aspect of our living together. But the anchor word, the anchor word is rest. Can somebody say rest? And that's what I spoke on on Saturday. Rest on every side it was the testimony of Solomon Solomon said God granted him rest rest from every storm that was rest that I heard from above yesterday I spoke on rest from every storm so it was the testimony of Solomon in that first king chapter 5 and said God gave me rest on every side. I pray for someone this morning that God will give you rest. On every side, God will give you rest. Your amen is suspicious. God will give you rest. 
when we talk about rest rest from storms rest from all forms of affliction now you see when we look at that yesterday now we, have, we began to see because uh, this man said there was no evil occurrence rest from pestilences rest from storms of life rest from challenges now you see the bible says affliction doth make a man mad I will explain he said when a man is afflicted affliction the resultant or the result of affliction is to make you to, to be out of your sense when somebody is afflicted you can see no matter how fashionista the person is you begin to dress in a crazy way he will not care about every other thing because he's afflicted he's delusioned he's confused confusion is a form of storm in the life of many people sickness is a form of storm in the life of many people famine famine is a storm and the excellence or the focus of every storm is to destabilize you storm is to make sure that, make sure that you lose your uh, 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 what do you call it stability in the journey of life there are people that they will gather wealth but when storm of sickness and disease come that sickness will not go until they finish spending everything some people you see at the, after they have spent millions they have borrowed, they have sold house to, to look for what is behind that sickness it may be after they have spent everything they said they didn't see anything and at last it may be just common drugs that they will give to that person and it will be okay and whereas he has done a lot of medical tests here and there they have prescribed so many drugs and at last it is something simple praise God it reminds me of the story of myself when I was young I was in the secondary school I was afflicted with sore many many times not because of football but somehow you see thank God we wear hose to school when I put my hose it is to be put hose on bandage because somehow if I remove my trouser and you see all these places it's not my own it's not football you see there will just be a kind of um, what do you call it something will just swell they call it Ali 4 or whatever be you know something will just swell and before you know it it will break by the time it breaks it it breaks it becomes a song when that one is healing the other leg will start its own and it was going and many hospitals you know I was in Abeguta then I was in secondary school I have to dress you know you know put on you, know, you will not know what I was passing through as a young boy and it was going on like that going on like that until I know it's part of why you know my father I have to go to Lantoro go to Lantoro hospital if you know Abeguta very well those are one of the good hospitals you know go there then after that sometimes now until when my father said I should come back home and when I go back home, it continues again. When one is healing, another one will start. Until the places become so, you know, what do you call it, the scar, alright, to the extent that they now resolve that they want to do plastic surgery. Do I even know what plastic surgery is? It's a young boy of um, perhaps 13, I mean, maybe I was 13, 14, they are going to cut my flesh. You know, because that place become light, it cannot longer heal by itself. Go to cover the place. My parents have spent money. Money has been spent. Until the, the surgeon who was a retired UCH professor who has who can do the only that thing in a private hospital. Now I got the card there and this and they look at it, okay, they are gonna do plastic surgery. And now said during the holiday the long holiday because I have to maybe be on admission and things like that and so that is when they will do the plastic surgery 
My father, we paid deposits. My son and mom went there, they paid deposits. Just to dress it and say, okay, just you have to be dressing it until when the holiday comes. So I they dress. Maybe I came back after maybe it's in our three days that I came back for another dressing. And they said, My money is finished. The deposit for surgery that involved my father paid that they said it's finished. And they went to go and consult to come and say, you know, ah, what is it? This and then my mom said, ah, this and then they went to go and um, um uh, you know, talk to the, the professor, a professor, and the secondary school boy. He did not allow that they should even dress the leg for me. That is affliction, and everything was going on like that. I was right, we have no choice. That is the only person that can do plus surgery, so which means we have to look for another money to deposit. But my mother has let me call it. Family friend, this generation we don't know. She, the woman happens to be a nurse, a senior nurse, a matron in the state hospital. So it's a place where I mommy mean, we are familiar with this and that. Now, just to say, okay, what to now keep on dressing it until they will be able to gather money to do the surgery proper. And you know what it means when they want to do plastic surgery for you? That is affliction. I am a Christian, thank God. But we just keep on praying and things like that. And uh, just to take me to the, the woman's house who was in the hospital to dress it just that I'll be going there you know nurse middle like that can do, do dressing for you and the woman just said what is even this leg safe that you bring the leg and uh, dress it I said yeah, you know what everybody that uh, the recommendation is pastor and she just dresses it and just put some uh, you know they call it injection powder or whatever put it on the top and say okay you know bandage it I should come back after two days by two days third day it started healing it started healing in few about two three weeks completely healed and that is the last day the problem of that I used to pass something swelling and can they come stop that day this is what have been it's storm have weathered for not less than two years from form one to form three but nobody will know praise God the only thing is that the way my colleagues will rush bus I can't rush bus like that school bus I may have to go to another far place when I was in Abekuta in order to catch bus when I know that I will not be you know uh, you know rushing and since then up till today if by mistake I hit that place against anything without putting anything it will heal without putting anything it will heal that is a form of storm at times you have spent everything who oh, we believe that if my parents have known that such a woman will we be through you know just that God is going to use are we going to waste money you know in different ways that is what storm does. Everybody has storms in different areas of life. But I pray once again for you. The Lord will give you rest. From every storm of life in the name of Jesus Christ. But I want to say that look. There are storms against marriage. There are storms against home. There are storms against our children. There are storms against our spouses. Many homes are breaking today. Things are happening. It's as if devil has focused his attention on families. I will begin to say, ah, what is it? You discover so many things, just little things. One of my, you know, practicing counseling, one of my great joy, you know, I see what, let me see, I see what God is doing in lives and homes. But two weeks ago, a case that I'm handling, you know, couple that the lady and the woman has packed out from the house for close to four years. And I've been, after they resolved that, okay, they have to get a counselor, get a therapist, and they decided, oh, many people have talked about it, families and things like that. They are the people that I know, but until they said, all right, let's submit to Reverend Deshola. And we started counseling, counseling, try to look at this, shift here, shift there, this and that. About two weeks Thursday, the one the woman who has packed almost four years packed back to her matrimonial home. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
That is what God can do. That is a storm that will have turned the family apart. It has already gone apart. The children are affected. If I'm still going to have session with the children to talk to them because you see when there is a collapse in the marriage it's not affecting the man and the woman alone the children have their share of it and that's why the children have to be kept sane so if you are here today if you're a single mother I want to tell you that the Lord will comfort you God will sustain your children and you see more importantly that God will raise father figures because one thing I, I was saying, uh, you I also uh, last is it not last okay is it last two weeks now last week, I wanted to see you know a doctor and say where are you, ah she said she's in the uh, she's in the friendly center you know in a seminar that I should come there so when I go there, somebody was defending a master student was defending, and uh, so I said ah, Reverend sit down, I have not become doctor and they have been calling me doctor anyway praise God. And they said, Reverend Doctor, sit down. I said, Lady, sit down. You are doctor, sit down. You know, and we begin to look at the seminar. And the lady was presenting something on families, talking about um, uh, uh, you know, family from four areas. Spoke about um, family no, but is it family now or home or whatever? Okay, I think it's family. Looking at it from four angles. One of the areas is that there is a family where authoritarian, where the father is, the family is authoritarian. And the other one is, uh, you just look at something, you know. Another one is um, a carefree. I can't remember the word, where children are allowed to do whatever they want to do. You know, then absent parenting. I think it's parenting. So absentia parenting. Uh -huh. You know, a parent that is not there. The one that is there, but he doesn't care. Do whatever you like. The one that is there and of course, you see, is authoritarian in nature. Do it this way. And the one that is there that, alright, he will allow you have some rules, but at the same time, you know, he still allow the boy or the child, you know, to do some things. Now, I can't remember what to use it, but those are the things that we are talking about. Then they now said I should, um, uh, uh, that you talk. Every, you know, after you seminar, all the lecturers, all the people that are there with they say, oh, yeah, Reverend, talk. Then I began to look at it, these types of, then we said, all these things, we should look at the foundation first. What is the foundation? What led a family to this uh, this system of parenting? System of parenting? System of parenting? But do you know that there are parents that are in the house but they are worse than absentia parents? They are in the house as if they are not there. They don't know what their children are doing. They don't care. Then I now say that, well, if there is anything I want to, uh, one of the things I can I said, thank God for parents. We are talking about parents. But there is one thing we should look at that parenting or parental figure is more than the biological ones. That there is a need for your children as they journey in life. That that's prayer. I used to pray that as my children journey, God should give them father figures, mother figures, father figures, mother figures. I'm very important. I said, because how many years do they want to sit under your supervision? Other they leave primary school, when they enter into our institution, how many times do they stay with you? But you see, within the first five years of development of a child, is a critical time in the life of that child. It's the period that the child will begin to form his or her character. If you miss that time, and that child now enter into adolescent enter into teenage, you know, a, a stage of life, and you cannot arrest the situation, you are losing that child. And so, if you are an absentia parent, you know, and you are not always, you know, there, you don't care, you just you think that it's only food that the child needs. I tell you, you don't know, 
who what is the thing because these are the th- period that children want to exhibit as the beats they want to say this is what i want to do it's like if that why is daddy telling me what to do why is mommy telling me to do praise god if you don't have understanding it is a delicate period i am saying that some of the things that affect us today even today we are repeating the same mistakes that our parents made when they were raising us shout hallelujah shout hallelujah A, a, a lady, a company sent a lady to me, a woman, you know, to me to, to for counseling. And she's, when they say, okay, the, the, the CEO of the company said, look, you need to see a, a, a counselor, to a therapist. And she was sent. And most of the time, you see, I mean, see them in the University of Ibadan there. Then, when we started, this and that, you know, everybody says it's okay. But now, left the husband in Likot, got job in Ibadan, somehow the marriage is having problems, this and that, but already it's affecting our work. And as I said, you need to go and see a counselor. And when she came and uh, talked, for the first one hour to one and a half hours, I was listening to her story. I always laugh when pastor's friend said, eh, where is this our counseling? Uh, they, I counseled 10 people, I counseled 20 people. It, you are not counseling anything. You can't cancel 10 people in a day. When they cannot to talk of 30 people in a day, you only told them what you wanted them to hear. You understand what I'm saying? You only told them and said, oh, go and pray. You fast three days. When you fast three days, I pray this prayer. You can even give me a prayer point. That does not solve his problem. And when she spoke for one and a half hours, okay, then I now began to ask some probing questions and said, okay, tell me more about your family background. And I explained about, okay, uh, the age of, uh, well, how is my, my mom is late. Uh, this person is about 46 years old. He's not a child. He has three children already. I said, my mom is late. You're my dad is this. Uh, my dad, of course, I have a dad. But somehow, she doesn't want to have anything to do with a dad. They begin to see the foundation. I told anyway the dad said because what happened said she witnessed how the father abused the mother abused the mother in beating you know battering and things like that and um, and that uh, and the mother the father will go out to drink smoke will not put money in the house the woman will be the one to labor labor provide you know and yet you know beating and things like that until when she was 15 and eventually the father and the mother had cancer died when she was 15 with four children and she happens to the firstborn and they remain, maybe the remaining two or three they are male and so it was his aunt, her hand that took her away that raised her and became a graduate of the university praise the lord and so since then does not want to have anything to do look at how many years now and when she finished, I said, so she doesn't want, she doesn't go home to look at the father, does not want to have anything to do with the father. And um, of course, at times when it's uh, younger ones who are not advantaged, you know, educational wise, you understand? Because he's responsible for what can he do? Maybe, you know, struggling, maybe did not, you know, he has, she has to look for money once in a while, maybe send money to them to buy drug for the man. But does not want to have anything to do with the man. After she finished one and a half hour storytelling. Then Anna said, okay. Don't forget she's having problem in her place of work. They sent her to see a counselor. What does your father's your father has to do with your place of work? <laughs> Praise God. It has a lot to do. The Bible says if the foundation is destroyed. Praise God. Then I now said, okay, I understand. I said, yeah. The fight your mother could not fight. You want to fight it now. The revenge that your, mo- your mom could not take, you want to take on your father now. And now, so, if your mother can look back from heaven and look at you, he will clap for you and say, good girl. What I could not do, you are doing it for me now. She kept quiet. I said, so, 
you think your mom yes your mom must be a fool to stay in your father's house throughout that period of time I said well truly if it is this time around when beating and things is involved we can ask her to, to leave the house because there is something you know some people come around and said no when the man is beating you just stay there you will die there and the man will continue after you have died you come to me as a counselor my husband is beating beating you once beating you two beating you three every time back 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 i will cancel you as a pastor pack your loads get out first there is something that is greater than divorce and that is the sacredness sacredness of life life is more important than any other thing that song uh, singer if what do you call it Osinachi or whatever that died eventually now she did not want to leave the house she didn't want to leave the house he said so uh, kidiko, kidiko, because uh, you know because she, she thought that she's a star so that they will not you know change kidiko, kidiko, and all those kind of things were going on and of course she kept quiet the pastor want to help the pastor should not intervene cancel out that she get that. when she died now Okay, the, mom, the husband will be sent to jail. Supposing the lawyer is able to, you know, to speak it out and she's released. He's released. Life is lost. What am I saying is, we are taking it one by one. So when I said that, she now said, okay. I said, now, all right. Okay, what do you think you want to do now? Because as a counselor, I will not tell you what to do at many times. He said, eh, maybe I should go to my father. Okay, good. If you go to your father, you want to tell your father why you are bitter over 30 something years ago, okay? Tell him if you want to tell him. It's better you tell him than carrying you know, load in your heart. Eventually, she traveled to see the father. The father was sick when she got there. And the brother was dead, this and that. Of course, everything she had wanted to tell the father, she could not tell the father. Then she came back. I gave her two weeks' appointments. Because counseling is like if you go to the hospital. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, see me after two weeks. And when she came after two weeks, we review where we saw what are the take home. And that's our own drugs. Our therapy is your this is a drug. Do this, do this. Okay. And it's okay. All right, all right. He told me the feedback. Okay. When are you going back again? She went back again. By that time, the father is well, but the father is fighting with now. He's 85 years of age. The father that does not used to read the Bible is now reading Bible. Because maybe she now knows that she's at the final exit you know, stage of life. Now she now said, it was telling me, I said, she now discovered that she was one troubling herself all these years. That there is no need to quarrel with the father. That what he's fighting for is not, is, you know, is useless. Things like that. That she, the father did not have problem. She's one that had problem. Yes. I pray that you will see yourself. That you will know that I have problem. And when you discover that you have problem, that is when you begin to seek for solution. So we are talking about foundation if foundation is having problem then there could not be home there would not be marriage and of course we cannot start without talking about those who are here to get married praise the lord we are in a time that young people feel that i saw her i saw him i spoke to her and we marry and we get started to marry who supervise that stages of your life the Bible says every way of a man is right in his own eyes. But you need somebody to speak. As I see so many people coming my way, coming for cancer, this and that, I discover that many of them, it is foundation problem. There are some now that have seen fine to find, you know, you know, you know, an inroad. It is not money. I think say it's because there's no no. I have girls, those that you know, work in bank, have good job, but they are having problems. They are still together in the home, but they are already divorced. They have separated. Hallelujah. We have people, you know, 
another case of you say, hey, it is because I know I have, you know, cases that pastor somebody who is pastor who has anointing, you know, when that is blessed. Somebody may be blessed. But there are challenges confronting homes. It is not a matter of money. Somebody hearing me? You can see the problem of the marriage is because of money. That is the one you see. Maybe the one that is affecting yours. Another person, it may be lack of affection. Okay? Another person, it may be lack of care. Another person, it may be some other things, including even sickness. So all these things are storms that can weary marriage. That can trouble marriage. Our anchor scripture for this period, like um, those that we are going to give the invitation card the last day, that is the last uh, something, the invitation card. I just write the theme of the invitation. What is the theme? Psalm 68, verse 6. Can you look at Psalm 68, verse 6? Psalm 68, verse 6 says, God said, that's KJV, God said, solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. God set solitaries in families and bring out those that are bound with chains. The Berean Bible translation put it this way. God settles the lonely in families. What is saying there? KJV said, God settled the, you know, the solitary family. Look at this translation. God provides homes for those who are deserted. <laughs> this translation says, God settles the lonely in families. Now, you can see that the first purpose of marriage or of family is that we should not be lonely. Somebody follow me? And that is exactly what God said. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. What did he say? He said that God said it is not good for the man to be what? To be alone. So from right from that scripture, opening scripture says God settles, brings solitary, you know, peace, harmonious living. A kind of a restful environment in families. So God set a, a kind of, uh, you know, God settles the lonely in families. But how come that somebody is married and is yet is still lonely? Is somebody following me? You are in a marriage and yet you are lonely. And God does not want the man to be alone. Obviously, God does not want the woman to be alone. Even the children that are part of the marriage, you see, they are part of the families. And God wants them not to be lonely. Are there no families that the father is a pharaoh? The children cannot relate with the father. They cannot relate with the mother. Especially the father. I said, what's wrong with you? This and that. You know, when the children want to, you know, play with the father, the father is, does not have time for that. I said, no, 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 I don't have nonsense. I don't have time for that kind of nonsense. Why? The way his own father raised him. That's what, how he wants to raise 21st generation children. You remember the way your father and your mother, the way your father raised you. Praise God. Especially if your father is a teacher. Praise God. They believe that it is ah for each other, daddy, daddy. I love my daddy, and I say, ah, no, 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 you run home here. What are you this way? I love my daddy. But I want to tell you, as things changes, we must learn how to combat with the new changes. Somebody getting it? How do you have peace in a home? That there is a quietness, a solitary environment. That now there is no loneliness. Solitary does not mean loneliness. You see, but it has to do that we are peaceful. 
And let me tell you something. The first thing that matters in this life is your nuclear family. What do I call it? Eh? Nuclear family. This is your nuclear family. You must do everything as a mother, as a father to raise your children. To do everything. There are cases that some people, they will go and take care of their uncle's children. They will take care of their auntie children. They will leave their own children. I know someone, you know, that it was the, his uncle that trained him in the higher institution. When the, the, the uncle's children, that is the younger brother to the father. All right? Now, his own children are young. They are yet to enter into the second higher institution. But look, this one, he was the one that trained this person until he has all the first degree. And came out after service, got work in the bank. But do you know that when it was his turn to help that uncle, help the children, he turned back. I'm talking of people that I know. I'm not like telling you fables. That he could not help. So, no, 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 no. so the man now was retired. The man was now helpless. He does not have what it takes to help his own children. If the man is wise, or if he has information, you will understand that. Look, let me save little by little for the future of my children. Is that not so? That the these children one day they will get it. If it is a target saving for the child education, I don't know. I mean, target saving account, Abi. I say, okay, I'm keeping it there. It's not there yet, but one day it will get there. But the person he thought that if I invest in this person, my children will not have problem, has a good job and everything, everything. And one thing you see is that such people and these are people that are Christians. But some people, their Christianity is just in the mouth. It's not in the heart. And if you look at it down, you see, you will now look that everything will get wrong at the angle of that person. Money is not everything. May you not be stranded in the journey of life. So, God has regard for marriage. It is his idea. It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make, look at what it says in another translation. That is Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. New international version says, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. It is God that makes a wife fit for a man and a man fit for a husband. But what is the essence of what we are saying? Uh, going back to our anchor scriptures, he said, God bring out those who are bound in chains. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity. May that be your story. That God, if there are chains in your marriage, if there are difficulties in your marriage, if you are bound with chains, chains of unforgiveness, chains of anger, chains of whatsoever that is tying you, that is not making your marriage to fit in into God's design for a home. I pray for you. May the Lord bring you out. Make every chain be broken in the name of Jesus. If you are a child in a family, the matter concerns you. You are to be a joy to your parents. You are going to bring joy into that family. But when you begin to misbehave, something has gone wrong with your life and destiny. And the very purpose of God, when you talk about family, it is not husband and wife alone that makes family. The children are involved as part of the family. As parents give the children recognition, the children also must give respect to their parents. And if anything is otherwise, it is a bondage. There are satanic hand in it or ignorance in it and the bible says god bring out those who are bound with chains is somebody following shout hallelujah in genesis chapter 2 verse 22 what god said in verse 18 when you not get to that genesis 2 22 then the lord god made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man 
and brought her to the man. And the Lord and the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Who brought her to the man? Answer me now. So if a marriage is to be successful today, there must be God's factor. Am I right? God must be involved. Oh, there are people that got married when they were not Christians, when they are unbelievers. Now that you are a Christian, why don't you bring God into that marriage? That's to say, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? What can the righteous do? Go back to the foundation. The God that is missing in the foundation of that marriage, bring God back to the foundation of that, of that home. When the two of you now submit to God, when you surrender to God, the devil does not want any marriage to stand. Hallelujah. Even I pray over my own marriage. When I see situations, I see people who have been married 20, 20, who have been married 26 years, 27 years, and they want to break it. They want to go. In your mind, you think that what are they looking for again? Eh? Their children have gotten married. What are they looking for again? Devil does not care. Even if you are married for 40 years, it becomes a special gold medal for the devil for that marriage to break. And so I want to, I'm learning, I want to make sure that my marriage continues to stand properly. I begin to learn what do I need to do to make my wife happy? What do I need to do to make myself a good husband? Even things that I don't do before, I now begin to learn it. Hey, somebody hearing me? Brothers in the house, don't worry. Before we finish, you will hear. Maybe we have special seminar for brothers. Where we are going to talk heart to heart. Praise the Lord. We look for how you bring some of our women also to talk heart to heart. What we have to do for our marriage to stand. If your marriage is threatened with adultery, you must fight it. Don't just say that, well, it cannot happen to me. Some people have said it and it happened to them. Is somebody hearing me? Devil is a schemer. I know, I know myself. You don't know yourself. When we are talking to young people today, hey, listen, that's why when I talk to young people, there is nothing like dating. We are dating. Dating is a game. It's a game of chance. If you want to, and especially you say you are in Christ, eh, you are trying, you are dating. And we are dating ourselves. We met ourselves. We talk ourselves. This and that. If I pray for anybody to start courtship in the church, what's the first thing? I want to get parental consent. Before I recognize your marriage, now, yes, you are just friends. Your parents must be involved. Take the lady to your parents. Take the guy to your parents. Let your parents say that, yes, we support you coming together. Then that's when you are starting a, a journey. Many people today, their marriage is shaking from day one because they just, I saw it by myself. I marry by myself. <laughs> the Bible said the end of a thing is better than the beginning. Marriage ceremony is not, I mean, wedding is not a marital life. Wedding is just for some few hours. Then you start the journey. But some things, and this and that, and the man is not doing this, the, man, the woman is doing this, this and that. It is the way you started. It is because there is no solid foundation. Maybe you are not born again, then you don't know the truth. Now that you know the truth, you need to invite God into that foundation. You will learn things that you need to do to solidify the foundation. Where there is a need for repentance, you repent and make sure you deal with whatever is threatening the marriage. Lady, if you are the one that have friends that are speaking and say, hey, what are men? Ah, me, I don't give my husband a cheat. I mean, I don't give a, my, my husband what they call it, a cheat. No, no, okay. I don't allow cheat from my husband. I don't like it. Uh, and you are acting on that. Somebody whose marriage has scattered a long time. They are just living in the house as tenants. And you're now saying that, you see, uh, you know, uh, no, ah, uh, you know, ah, uh, uh, it is because you are in Swegbe vehicle. And uh, this and that. Me, I don't take nonsense. Uh, you come? All these women liberation will not take you anywhere. All these women like, there is nothing like women liberation. 
And there are some pastors to listen to today. I listen to on radio. I hear some people that what they are preaching is more of women liberation. They want to tell you that you are equal with your husband. They want to tell you that you must do this, you must do that for you to flex muscle. We are not saying that the husband should allow you to breathe. And that's how we tell our men some things. Allow your woman to breathe. You can't make an angel of your wife overnight. Whatever you want from the life of your wife, it takes love. The Bible says even the truth we preach, we preach it what? In love. You want to correct a woman, you want to correct your children, it must be done in love, in atmosphere of love. But at the same time, don't be a woman and say, my husband cannot tell me anything. Whatever I want to do, that I will do. Hey, this and that, there is nothing can do. I have my life to live. No, when you are married, you don't have your, your life must be lived together. Is that also? You must live together. Can two work together? Eight months, three, three. I said they do what? They agree. And so, if you are not going to have an agreement with a person in the journey of marriage, don't start. If your values and the value of that person it has variance in each other with each other, don't start. Talk less of people say they are dating the, the man, the guy can have two, three ladies at the same time. The only thing they are not going to meet. So I'm sensing them. I'm censoring them. As he censoring them, that's why he begin to sleep with them. You know, sleep with them. Young my, 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 my young ones in the house teenagers or youths that are yet to marry let me tell you my daughters the day a guy sleeps with you you have lost it I'm talking from different angle as a pastor as somebody who has passed that journey you understand now and as a counseling psychologist as a psychologist you will discover that when a guy pressurizes you for sex and you have become sex object before marriage, that marriage will have problem in the future. There is nothing you want to do about that. Except God help you. Because the, the point there are two things. That guy or that man will never trust you when he travels two months, three months, he's not around this and that, and you are getting closer to a particular, to a man you will suspect that my wife can sleep with anything that if anybody hey, put prayer, he's going to, ready to open her laps he's not, he's not going to trust you and you also, you are not going to trust you know, trust the person and also today, if you see uh, a lady getting close to your, to your husband, you are suspicious. And say, eh, eh, I saw you when I was driving. I saw you. I saw a lady, you know, uh, in, your, in, your, in your car. What was that lady? Or somebody said they saw you and a lady in an eatery. What are you doing there together? Because in our society today, when you see a man and a woman, something must be in there. Maybe they did Praise ye the Lord. I said, Praise ye the Lord. When my wife was actively, you know, working in the bank, when somebody is locked up in the bank from morning and is going to go for a lunch, maybe he has to go to eat to eat. And a male colleague of us said, Oh, are you going for lunch? Let's go out for lunch. You know, the way it happens is corporate something. You understand that? And somebody now say, I saw your wife. Eh? with a person they are eating in the eatery. To me, because I know how my home started, it's not a news. It's not a news. I will ask you, you saw them eating in the eatery, huh? Where did they suppose to eat? On the, on the road. Shout hallelujah. It's not a news. Or you even, you know, these days that there is even photo, do you not take the picture? I now send it. Some people even take it, they can send it to the social media. Your enemies. Abi? They will start sending me, I said, the reverend, reverend's wife. You know, and the, uh, 
If he's a man, side cheek. Side cheek man. <laughs> Praise God. And you put it there. And you see today, you see something on social media. Ah! The wife of our pastor. Not everything you see on social media is true. Make believe things. Hallelujah. You can even edit that picture and carry the woman on the lap of the man. Through of us. And you have condemned everybody and say, ah, so they are just deceiving us. They are just deceiving us. You better don't kill yourself. Because the owner of the wife is not dying. What is your own headache? What's your own problem? Praise God. Because whatever story my wife tells me, before she even tells me the story, I have believed the story already. And there is no any other story I want to believe from anybody. Praise God. And I say, Pastor, now, hey, maybe I'm driving, I see somebody, I carry. I carry. And somebody, you know, my wife is even a foreign person. There are some, we daily, whether they are older, they are There are some who want to answer, she will call her your girlfriend. There are some people she calls my girlfriend. Praise God. Hallelujah. That she called my girlfriend, sir, your girlfriend. This, she would just say, I'll be joking because the person wants to talk to me. You know that the person is close. Maybe I'm close to the family. There are some that are even older than me. Praise God. But because they want to talk to me, they know that if you see me, he knows them. Know their husband. Know, that is how you live a transparent life. But don't let what the world is saying crash your marriage. Are you with me this morning? Praise the Lord. That's why the foundation matters. You must understand what is the sound foundation. How do you find it was God's idea? And that's why you want to find a wife, you must pray. Whosoever find that a wife, some people now, they will say, ah, you say, in this New Testament, God does not look for wife for anybody again. You are the one that will find it yourself. Because the Bible says, whosoever find that a wife, find that a good thing. You are the one that will find. They thought that that finding is using your, your eyes like Bob. So when you say, ah, let me look at fine girls in this church. You go to another place, let me look for girls. Ah, this one, the leg is straight. She, because she's wearing trousers, that's why. Do you know if you remove that trouser, whether the leg is not straight to you, no. Praise God. I say, ah, yeah, it's this one. Eh? So people they will be giving measurement. You know, she'll be probably five feet, five, six, five something. It must be so so and so and so. Hey, kidika, kidika. Eh. The Bible says beauty is vain. But the woman that fear the Lord. She what? She shall be praised. So you will find them means to find anything you find it in relation to God. It is what you is important to you put before God. Is that not so? The finding is you must consult God first. You must talk to God first. That is how you can have an healthy marriage. I know it's a continuous thing uh, uh, sessions. Praise God. In New Living Translation, it says, the Lord said, God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just, just right for him. And helper who is what? Right. God knows who is right for the journey of your life. Somebody is going to support you in the journey of life. Somebody you are going to maintain the same value together. That you'll be able to race home together. He knows. But I said, even if we have married when we did not know God, now we can submit our marriage to God. And things that are satanic operations, God is ready to deal with it. Shout hallelujah. In the book of Proverbs chapter 5 verse 18, in Amplified Bibles, Proverbs chapter 5 verse 18 to 19, he said, let your fountain let your fountain be blessed. In the Amplified Bible, say, let your fountain, wife, he put wife there. The fountain he's talking about is not his wife. 
let your fountain be blessed with rewards of fidelity and rejoice with the wife of your youth. He said, let your fountain, your wife, be blessed with rewards of fidelity, purity, and rejoice in the wife of your youth. Let her be as a loving hand and graceful doe. Let her breast refresh and satisfy you at all times. Always be accelerated and delight in her love. Shout hallelujah. Say, be thou ravished always with our love. But what is that word? Let your fountain, your fountain, your wife be blessed with the rewards of fidelity. That is one way to reward your wife, man, is your purity, your fidelity. Shout hallelujah. Praise God. You know, don't follow the world philosophy. You know, there are some songs that still pray, play. Pray. They are thieves. Those who are quoting Solomon and say, after all, Solomon is a man of God. He's a thief. After all, David is ha. Ah, David, I heard it. I heard it that on the social that in media that a pastor a prophet said there is no place where God said it is one man one wife that the issue of uh, polygamy you know it is not wrong it is biblical so God did not you know God is not against it I don't know whether you have had such arguments and they say this morning we are talking about you know scriptures and doctrine before you know it it becomes error becomes a doctrine because there will be followers. Somebody will ask, you know, people like that, they will have, you know, great number of followers following them. Now, and you see men there clapping. So the one that has been dating, that has been looking at Rita before, I say, okay, Rita outside. Side chick. Now, Reverend the Pastor has said, bring Rita inside. And you see them looking at their wife and say, Shetty, baby, you here now? You cannot bring Rita in. Sorry if there is Rita in the house. Or maybe it is Ruth. Praise God. And now bring Ruth in. And bring Susan and Susan in. And now say, aha! Polygamy is not a sin. Can you imagine 21st century? Is that what he, he, will, he will say in the New Testament? So, go want a peaceful home. I was talking to a Muslim person. I said, tell me, how can a man be faithful to two, three wives at a time? Because in Yoruba, to she did if he can do <laughs> praise God, can do right, day day. How can you do day day with three people? Four people at the same time. Eh? How can you say too much? You have one gun. We are telling you now you should day day with that one. Is it four you want to do day day with? Praise God. That's what people you deceive themselves. Amen. I say now, he says uh, you can have mine, you can have many. Uh, this and that. that is three Sundays ago. We are talking about another gospel. Is that not so? Don't listen to another gospel. If any man comes and he does not bring the doctrine of Christ, we read it this morning, the Bible says, don't allow him in your house. Don't say bye-bye when he's going. He said, whosoever do that is a particle of his sin. Those of you did not come you know, when I was teaching in the morning. The seminar in the morning. Hallelujah. It's as serious as that. God frowns at wrong doctrine that is not in consonance with the scriptures. From this place, he says that, he said, and rejoice in the wife of your youth. You must reward your wife with fidelity. Because the woman is not, is not common for you to see a, a married woman, you know, going out after another man. I'm not saying it's not happening. Praise God. I can tell you so many things, but don't worry. You'll be hearing the story little by little. Shout hallelujah. 
At times you think that the man is the culprit. There are women that are dangerous. That are dangerous. But you see, you look at it and uh, you think that uh, all is is all is well. Fidelity, but because men you want to, and that's why I always tell people that look, I frown at a woman divorcing the husband. Hear me, quote me. If a woman divorced the husband, hello, and the husband wants to go and marry another person, I'm ready to conduct that wedding. Because in the New Testament, every rules about God hates divorce, all right, is to protect the woman. You must not place rest preciously with the wife of your youth. I will quote it for you in the Malachi. Praise God. He said, God is, a, you know, God is jealous, God this and that, you know. He said, why does Moses said we should give her letter of divorce? And Jesus said, because of the hardness of your heart. In the beginning, it was not so. It is a man that used to divorce a woman. And God said, it should not be so. But when you see a woman that, that, that has the audacity, you understand what I'm saying now? To take the husband to court and people try to intervene especially when we know that okay, that it is not something that should lead to divorce. Is somebody hearing me? And we talk to such a woman. There are some, some, some you know, I have cases at times. Hallelujah. That I say, no, I don't know. I said, how can somebody, you have four children and you leave your husband's house and your last one is just five years and you leave the husband's house and you are saying it is over and the man has never raised his hand to beat you for once praise God but let me tell you what is what you say something small is, it, can, it can scatter marriage especially when you begin to listen to another voice there are prophets outside there that are aiming to destroy your marriage. They will see vision. They will see revelation. They can say your wife is a wish. After three children, she's a wish. After 15 years of marriage, she's a wish. And she has not killed you with her witchcraft in the last 15 years. But because now, economy downturn, uh, you are sacked in your place of work, and things like that, you do one business, it's not doing well because you did not have, you know, better orientation of information about that business. He said, they say, ah, it is your wife. Especially if your wife is light in complexion, you are in trouble. Because those that light complexion, they are wish. So how many wishes are in the house here? Praise God. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. They say, ah, ah, anybody that is like, it must be a wish. If you say, well, she's not, but she's light. But she's not dark, sha. But when you say it's dark, ah, no wonder. Ah, those dark people, they are more wish. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because they don't want to show that their prophecy is failed. I mean, that they are these lies. So, homes are scattering so many things, and uh, things are happening. But look, give your host your wife the honor of fidelity honor of what fidelity means purity one wife one wife your wife and your wife those side chicks they are just draining your pocket eh? they cannot marry you they will drain you as they are draining they will drain another person what is in the body of side chicks that is not in the body of your wife do you know one thing I discover? People that are pursuing other ladies or some people, they will now go and marry another person. When I now look at their wife, they leave. They, I mean, they have left. And the person they are married, you will see their word and opposite in terms of beauty. But you almost ask, ah, what did you see in this person? <laughs> Praise God. Ask her, you left your wife. For this one, in fact, you almost say for this thing. Because devil just wants to achieve his aim. He can use anybody to achieve his aim. 
He can even as you, as you, I mean, use house help. How can somebody drive his wife and now marry an house help that did not go to school? The house help that cannot follow her to social meetings, so because she cannot speak grammar. Amen. And yet, devil will derange her aim, and his air will not be correct until he begin to do <laughs> and begin to do incorrect things. You want to say that person is normal? It's abnormal. It's not normal. There was a case like that to somebody, you know, we left the, I mean, he just packed. They were, some of you on campus, all this campus Christianity. He was the president of the fellowship. The lady was a member of the fellowship on campus. They came out from the university together. And the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the man has first class in economics. The woman studied accounting. They came out from the university. They got married. If you say a president of fellowship, who would not want to marry a president of fellowship? But that's what you are saying. You don't consult God. You are consulting, ah, this one must be a husband material. Who told you is an husband material? A president of fellowship must be, looks like a husband material. But after they marry, work a little bit, left the job, and refused to work a first class in economics. And the, the woman was the, was the one working, working in the bank, you know, this and that, working back and that, and he, he will sit back at home. Look for job, he will not look for job. Shake it, shake it, shake it. One, shake it, shake it. That is, is already, uh, what do you call it? Eh? eh? They don't, he, they, he has been charmed, Abi. He's been hypnotized. And one day the woman went to work and now just carry three children. That, that mean, how many children now? Carry about two, two children. Two children. One, a baby, two or three children. One's a baby. One baby is about five years old. He just took them to their village and packed loads. The woman just came from work and discovered that properties are gone, children are gone. And went to the village. I'm not telling you stories. I'm telling you what I know. And now getting ha, this and that. Now go and trace the woman. And the woman went to go and through to the, the, to, the, to, uh, to the town of the, of the husband. Or the village of the husband. When he got there. How do you want to take care of a two or three year old child? When he got there now. Say ah, what do you want to do? Because those who are working on him. He must come back home. When he got back home now, now the wife, she, is the wife going to leave his job? Oh, sorry, her job in the city? And so, they now look for a small girl to be helping him to take care of the baby. After some time, he pregnated that one. So that one is the wife now, <laughs> you know, in the village there. First class brain, useless. Is somebody hearing me? There are satanic attack. But many of all these start from ignorance. If you don't know what you are doing. And so, whatever may be the state of your marriage, you must understand that God can bring out those who are bound with chains. Shout hallelujah. If you look at um, uh, Malachi 2.15, I've quoted that scripture. He said, as not the Lord, that is... Um, uh, Berean standard Bible says as not the Lord made them one having a portion of the spirit and why one because he seeks godly offspring so guard yourself in your spirit and do not break faith with the wife of your youth it seems I'm talking men, more to men this morning praise God can you see and did not he make one God make how many for Adam how many did God make he said one, yet he had residue of spirit. That is, if God wants to do more, two, three, he can do that. And we have, why is it one? That he might seek a godly seed. Therefore, take it to your spirit and let not deal treacherously against the wives of his youth. Is that what is there? Wives of his youth. Or what? Eh? Is it wives? wife of his youth not wives of his youth 
Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Let me close this way this morning. In God's kingdom, a strong and successful marriage is falling in love with the same person. As we give that person our all unconditionally. Our all unconditionally. Marriage requires faith in our mighty God and faith in our spouse. It requires waking up every morning and being willing to give 100% of our attention, love, and effort. Marriage requires love. Marriage requires effort. If your love is not intentional, love can be weak. Love can be weary. I, I love you. I love you. Wow. That is wonderful. But if it is not intentional love, you can see that love can be shaken. Praise God. Anybody can be tempted. They will throw arrows. There are ladies you do, shouldn't want to have anything done with, but somehow they will throw harrow. But because you don't understand that devil is trying to create a shame to bind you to that lady to, or that woman, all right, instead for you now to take, to shout, cry out, seek for counsel, seek for prayer, you will keep it to yourself, and before you know it, it will begin to bring out branches. Are there no people today, men that are glued to pornography? Praise the Lord. Glue to so many things. And you don't want your marriage to break. Then you must go to the foundation and put things right. Oh, you are a woman. Suddenly you just become stubborn. Because there is influence. Somebody is influencing you outside. Oh, you begin to compare a man outside, you know, to your husband. I say, hey, the real man. You are talking about other men. They are real men. Your wife or your husband now, uncle. Fake, fake man. Is that what you are saying? Eh? The, 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 the real men. Go on, go on, go on. See the real men outside. And see the way they are taking care of their wife. Go on, see the real men. And you are taking the man. You are a fake man. And you want the man to smile. Just hallelujah. Whatever you see outside, you can bring it home. Amen. Brothers, amen. amen. Oh, my wife does not know how to dress. And there are these, all these, uh, the tiny, tiny leg girls outside that they can dress to kill. Eh? Praise God. Why don't you invite that and say, come. Maybe it's a, your colleague. Where do you get your dresses from? Praise God. I will tell you the boutique, okay? Take your wife there. Now, I want to be dressed. If it's a godly dress in any way, praise God. There's a particular color you like. Now, can you dress like this? Eh? I love that. Shout hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Because some of our sisters, too, when they get married, no back party, it's as if the man don't finish. Especially if the man is a pastor. Or if the man is a deacon. I say, eh, what do you want to do now? Eh, you are complaining about my, my dressing. So eh, you are seeing somebody outside. You are seeing somebody outside. They say your dressing is not good. You say you see somebody outside. Because you are color blind. Oh, Billy, you don't even know how to put this color and color together. Some they will dress as if they are going to the they are going to Ojaoko, you know, going to where they <laughs> I said, they are, you know, they just dress anyhow. And I said, the man who knows, you know, is looking at somebody outside. Why don't you also, when the husband is talking about, why do you dress this way? Uh, take care of your skin, take care of this and that. Uh, it does not matter. It is Jesus inside that matters. Ah! There are people who have Jesus inside, and they say, have Jesus outside. So don't have Jesus inside alone, have him also outside. Praise God. You must dress neatly. You must dress corporately. You must dress in, form, in such a way that your husband should be able to showcase you. Are you getting my point? You know, there are some women that say, the husband, when you see the way the husband dresses, you know, every time. And you now have, the, you know, a kind of a woman that cannot, to say, this is my wife is a problem. Because they, people know the man, they will say, ah, we know that if the man is dressing like this, eh, we know the, 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 the wife, Abby, 
will be equal to this. Not be so. Praise God. Shout hallelujah. I tell people I don't I don't dress. Praise God. Okay, the story I was saying the other time. When the lecturer she's a woman who was coordinating that uh, something. I said, oh, Reverend, come. I said, This is Reverend, I said, to Reverend Doctor, you know, introduce and things like that. He was now he was she was now correcting the way people dress. Even staff in that department. He said, He said, Can you see Reverend? Praise God. Because I was in suit. He said, Can you see Reverend? Say any time. Say, you see Reverend? How? Supposing I just wear a bedroom slipper, would they ask me to come to where they're doing seminar? God forbid, batting. So, when I wake up in the morning, the way spirit directs me is the way I dress. <laughs> Praise God. But one thing is that I don't believe in casual dressing. Even if you are wearing t-shirt and jeans, let it be corporate. You don't know where you will find yourself that day. There are cases that I find myself, you know, as I might have forgotten that there is a particular function that I have to attend. Hallelujah. And so good enough that at least uh, you know I know I know I know, I know everything we fall. I say, oh, oh, because I know that no problem. Praise God. That is how our sisters. I saw a woman was telling me and saying, you should be telling. You know, she, my, my husband does not dress very well. My husband does not dress very well. This and that. And he said, hey, me, I don't, I don't care. You don't care what? The woman also wants to showcase the husband. Does not want an husband that just dressed him and say, oh, this one is a, a shoemaker or is it a mechanic? Or, you know? Oh, this one is it a alajapa? Praise God. No. It's part of what we still look at very well. Because some of you thought that uh, I have married you, I have married you. There is nothing you can do about it. I'm married, I'm married. Even I don't know how to dress. You just take it like that. Take it like that. Ah. I pray your home will not break. Oh. Take it like that. Take it like that. It may not work for some people. Because when there is distrust, when there is unfaithfulness, marriage begins to fall apart. So God sets solitary. God brings the lonely into families. You should not be lonely in your marriage. You should not be lonely in your family. You should not be lonely in relating with your husband or with your wife. You should talk things over. You should talk about it. If there is anything the man has to change, you have to talk to the man. If there is anything the woman has to change, you have to talk to the woman. If there are things the children have to change, you have to talk to the children. Even the children, you know, allow them also to breathe. Praise God. I did that as uh, one of the slogans of our president. Let the poor breathe. Are we breathing? God have mercy upon the poor. <laughs> Let's rise up to pray. <laughs> Shout. Let's pray. So, but let the children, let them express themselves. Even if they are wrong, you'll be able to correct them. Are you blessed this morning? Yes, sir. Do you have something? I mean, are you able to pick something? Yes, sir. The Lord will help us. Our marriage will stand. I want you to pray and say, God, visit the foundation of my marriage. Visit the foundation of my home. Lord, touch the life of my children. Lord, touch the life of my spouse. Can we pray in the name of Jesus Christ? God, visit my marriage, visit my home. If there is emphasis that I have given this money, it's on God's factor. You need God in that marriage. If the marriage is shaking, you need God. If your home is shaking, you need God. If there are things you must, you know, stay clear of, you must stay clear of it. If you are yet to get married, check the foundation very well. And follow the biblical principles. Allow God to guide you. Let God choose for you. Let God help your marriage. Let God help your home. Children, pray for your parents. Parents, pray for your children. That at a stage that my children will be choosing a partner, God, may they not choose wrongly. That we are not going to be a bad example to our children. 
That's why if there are chains, things it seems that is there, tell the Lord, deliver us from this bondage. So he brings out those who are bound with chains. There is satanic chains, God, let it break. Lord, let it break. Lord, let it break. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lord, I pray the truth has been shared with your people. Every area where they need help, I pray God Almighty, you will help them in the name of Jesus. Our desire is to have peace on every side. To have rest on every side. Including our marriages. I pray Lord that every home here will begin to enjoy rest. As many that are bound with one shame or the other in character, in behavior, in attitude, any arrow that is sent into that family, I pray God, according to your word, bring them out from shames in the name of Jesus Christ. We are hearts need to be healed because of affliction, because of pain, because of discouragement of what the, what the husband has done in the past or the wife has done in the past. Father, I pray you will heal such heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, grant grace of forgiveness. Even as we continue in this series in the name of Jesus. That there will be genuine forgiveness. That there will be truthfulness. Everybody will desire a new beginning. In the name of Jesus. And I pray, O oh Lord God Almighty, as many that are facing one affliction or the other. Lord, I pray, like I said, devil brings affliction as a storm. To waste finances, to waste. And whereas the, the solution is with you. My testimony I gave the other time, as young as I was, I have to pray. I know my brothers also pray for God to intervene on my leg. And God answered. Over many years now, over 40 something years, you know, Lord, you have remained faithful. Over 45 years, Lord Jehovah, it has not been a problem. That's whatever did not re return. And even if I make a mistake, hit that place, automatic healing without putting anything. I pray, oh Lord, you are the almighty God. I pray for healing in every life, in every situation. Whatever storm that is blowing any life, any business, any home, I command, peace be still in the name of Jesus. Every storm gathering together to launch their way into any marriage, into any career, into any business, I beat you backward in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That all the devices of the enemy will not be fulfilled. Amen. This time around there is famine. I pray the Bible says in time of famine we shall have surplus. That the storm of famine will be far away from you. Amen. The Lord will send help from Zion. The Lord will satisfy you. Amen. With good things in Jesus name. Amen. You know this week for good. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. In Jesus mighty name.